name is Colleen Kalashu, and in this uh, video, we're going to be looking at how you use um, Webston databases to find data about a given variant. Um, uh, one of the key databases that's growing more and more important is ClinVar. We have a separate video on that, um, so if you want to learn more about how to use ClinVar. I'm going to show a couple of um, disease-specific and gene-specific databases that I use a lot in my work as a cardiovascular genetic counselor. Uh, this is a very useful database for arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy uh, that's curated by a team in the Netherlands. Um, what's really important when you're looking at these kinds of updated databases is to check how often they're updated. And you can see this was last updated in February 2015, so anything published since then wouldn't be in here. Uh, and we also want to think about, you know, how you use a database like this. So for some databases, you may know um, enough about the group who runs the database that you could, that you l likely agree with their classification if they assert a classification. In other cases, in many cases, it's probably just a way for you to identify primary literature that you might go then and review yourself. Um, and in some cases, these databases might include unpublished um, data that, that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. So, a database for ARVC. This is a database for inherited arrhythmias that I love. Um, it's really neat. It's very comprehensive. In addition to having a ton of curated literature on variants in the various ion channels associated with arrhythmias. They also do an alignment with paralogs for those genes, which can be um, very informative. For example, we might look at KCNQ1, the gene for long QT type 1. And you can see um, you look at all known KCNQ1 variants listed by codon, and um, so you might go look at you know, you saw at uh, codon 73, and then see what data is available, and it gives you the paralog alignments, uh, and then also all of um, the literature that they're aware of, which experiences often all of the findable literature, um, as well as a link out to dbSNP, et cetera, and the, the literature links out to the PubMed entries. Um, and then the really powerful thing about this database um, is of the paralog alignment, you can actually see if there was a variant implicated in a different disease in the same corresponding codon in a different gene, um, a paralog gene. So, for example, um, for KCNQ1, uh, we might look at uh, code 7 right here, and here we can see that um, a variant at the corresponding codon in KCNA5 had been implicated in pulmonary, pulmonary arterial hypertension. So that might increase our, um, our additional evidence for pathogenicity as that, that the similar uh, codon, the corresponding codon in um, a paralog is susceptible to uh, pathogenic variation. So those are just two examples of disease-specific databases. Um, what about how you can find other databases? Um, well, one source is uh, gene review. So if you're looking for a database for your favorite disease or gene or your, you, know, you just got an exome result and there are secondary or incidental findings and you need to learn more about them and they're kind of outside your realm, how do you find those resources? So gene reviews is one way. Um, if, so we've got the uh, BCA1 and 2 HPD entry here. If you go to molecular genetics, it lists locus specific databases um, for those genes, and that's true for many gene reviews entries. Find them is through the Human Genome Variation Society listings. They have a couple different listings. If you go here under databases, you'll see a range of them, uh, mitochondrial, chromosomal. What I've focused on here are the disease-centered um, as well as, on this tab, the gene-centered listing. So we might go look up a particular gene. Uh, I'm wire 2, another gene that I deal with often in cardiology, and that they've listed um, a a specific database uh, run by Dr. Silvia Priori um, and um, colleagues in Italy for that gene. 
CVS is a great place to look. Uh, you'll find that, that some of these are no longer available, which can be a bit frustrating, but nonetheless, it's a really, really good resource. Laboratories are also now starting to provide their own databases where they share their classifications and how recently they were reviewed. Some of this will, of course, be redundant with ClinVar, but not always. So this is MVClass. Um, it's a classification catalog provided by um, Mgenetics. I have searched for MYH7, one of my favorite genes, and I can see uh, various listings for variants. Um, the transcript, this, the dot nomenclature, the p dot nomenclature aliases, which is great, their classification, when they last reviewed it, uh, et cetera. Uh, and Vitae also has a similar database, um, so we could search for MYH7 there as well. Uh, and we'll see um, not only some of their classifications, but they also pull in data um, from ClinVar. Um, and I didn't really have a case uh, of a variant that was in the ClinVitae database, uh, but was not yet in ClinVar because they had reviewed it so recently that it had not gotten dumped into ClinVar yet, and the data that I found is very useful. One other trick is uh, you can do a Google search. Um, use gene name or your, and LOVD. So LOVD is a uh, open database platform. Um, for uh, variant databases, uh, so it can be used by anyone. So you'll see a variety of institutions hosting or use the LLVD platform um, uh, to structure their data. So we'll just look at a couple of these. Okay. One hosted by um, this here, and similar format. Um, they all kind of look this way because they're using the same platform. It gives you out to various things, and then they'll be um, linked to uh, variant data. You can look by type of variant. Uh, you can search in a variety of ways. Uh, you can look at all unique sequence variants. Uh, here is one hosted by a group in um, China. Uh, similar, you can look by variants with no known pathogenicity. Uh, this can often just be a way to find primary literature that other people have created. Um, in another video, uh, we're going to cover um, a, a really useful and robust way to find data on variants that actually often finds you everything that is listed in these sorts of databases, which is uh, using some crafty Google searches to identify all um, locally available data. Uh, so take a look at that if you were interested in that.